Hey friends, it is Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome to another What's for Dinner. I'm very excited tonight. I've got four crock pot soups, chilies, meals, whatever you want to call them. I've got the last one right back there waiting for you. And um, tonight is also a very special collab with my friend Tiffany from Small Town Six. I will have her video and channel linked in my description box. Be sure and check out her What's for Dinner when you're done here. And if you're coming over from Tiffany's channel, thank you so much for stopping in. I hope that you will enjoy what I have to offer here and will stick around for some time to come. And to all of my old friends, I'm so happy to see you again. And as always, I invite you to sit back, relax, grab some hot chocolate instead of sweet tea because it is cold. Whatever you do, have a good time and let me do the cooking. The first meal that I'm going to share with you is cats, chicken, and gnocchi. I'm going to make this in the crock pot and this is my version of chicken and dumplings based on cat's recipe. I'm going to start out, of course, by spraying my crock pot with some nonstick spray. And I had a blonde moment here. I'm putting in one can of cream of chicken and mushroom soup. I saw this soup that had the two combined and thought, oh, well, that'll be neat. I'll just have one soup. But I was going on memory from this recipe and it actually calls for two cans of soup, one of each. So I needed two cans here. But anyway, I've got one can of soup and I'm putting in one can of water. I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon or so of garlic powder. And I'm gonna make me some chicken broth with about a teaspoon of this chicken base stirred right in. I was never any good at making dumplings and thanks to this gnocchi I do not have to worry about that anymore. I am going to put in some pepper I'm not going to put in but just a little bit of salt right now because sometimes these um, cream of chicken and cream of mushroom soups will be a little bit on the salty side. I'm gonna put in two frozen boneless skinless chicken breasts. I don't worry that they're not necessarily completely covered because they will add a little bit of water to this as they cook down. And I'm gonna cook this on low all day long while I'm going to work. When I come home, you can see it has cooked down quite a bit. So I'm gonna take my little meat chopper and chop up all this chicken and shred it right in the crock pot. When I get to looking at this, I decided I wanted to add a little bit more water because I just wanted to make sure I had enough broth in there for my gnocchi to cook up in. And that is what I'm doing now, is just breaking that apart, and that's just one package of gnocchi. And I'm just gonna break them little pieces apart and put them down in that broth, and then I'll just sort of stir them in to make sure they're all incorporated. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Kat. Her channel's called Southern Farm and Kitchen, but I will be sure to leave her channel and her video that contains her recipe for the chicken doki down in my description box. Trust me, you'll want to go watch her because she just has a great presentation of this. Thank you, Kat, for this yummy recipe. We love it. Now that I've got my gnocchi in, I'm going to put about a teaspoonful of parsley flakes in there and a little bit more pepper because I do like a lot of pepper in my chicken and dumplings. I'm going to stir it all together, put the lid back on, and let it sit for about 30 minutes on low while I put a salad together.
this was just the kind of day that it was. Do you ever have these kind of days where <laughs> you just kind of have trouble with everything you go to do? That's sort of how this day was for me. My salad dressing was empty. My gnocchi didn't have enough water in it. And I was a can of soup short. But hey, what can you say? It must have been a Monday. Now that my gnocchi has softened up, and like I said, it just takes 30 minutes or so for that to get done. I'm just going to dish it up, even missing the one can of soup. These are delicious chicken and dumplings, and that extra can just makes them even more creamy. I have never been able to make chicken and dumplings until I tried this recipe, and I love these potato dumplings. So this was a warm hearty delicious meal and like I said I just put a salad with it and it hit the spot. Now we're going to make a taco soup. I have eaten taco soup many times but I had never made it. So I'm starting with just a very small onion. It didn't take much so this little guy did the trick. I'm chopping mine up really fine because that's how I like it in soups. Now I'm actually preparing this on top of the stove because I was home this day and you do need a pound of ground beef. Now you could prepare this ahead of time and freeze your ground beef and make this a dump and go crock pot recipe really easy. Or if you just wanted to put in some canned shredded chicken, you could make it a chicken taco soup without any um, cooking. You could also use rotisserie chicken in it and not have to do any stove top cooking. So this is actually a crock pot soup, but I've made it on top of the stove. So I just put my onion and a little bit of garlic down inside of this ground beef that I was browning up. And I have drained my grease off that, as you can see. I'm just getting the flavor sweated out of that garlic. And now I'm going to add in two 14 ounce cans of petite diced tomatoes and I add everything in, juice and all. I'm not draining or rinsing any of the ingredients that I'm putting in here because I want all that rich flavor. Now I'm going to add in a can of super sweet corn. Putting in one can of pinto beans, and this is about a 15 ounce can. Gonna put in a 15 ounce can of black beans. And then I'm gonna be adding in a little bit of water, just about a cup. And once all this comes together right here, I am gonna let this heat up just a little bit before I add my spices in. I wanna get all these ingredients combined really well. And then once it comes up to a simmer, I'll start adding in my spices here. It could not be any easier. You just take one package of taco seasoning, and that's a one ounce pack. And then you take half of a ranch seasoning packet. And I'll be honest with you, it would probably not hurt to go ahead and throw that whole package of ranch in there. I don't think it would be too overpowering at all for this recipe. But feel free to do what I do. I just used half of it since this was the first time I made it, and I used the other half of that package on something else this week. I'm going to stir all of that in. See, I do come back and put a little bit more, <laughs> but I still had some left. Going to get all those seasonings stirred in, bring it back up to a boil. I'm going to turn it down and cover and simmer it. For just a little bit longer. I think I let this simmer about 30 minutes and it cooked up beautifully. It's very rich. It's a very pretty soup too. I 
sliced up a little green onion here to go on the top of it. There's nothing like a good warm soup on these cold wintry days we've been having, especially one that you can just let cook in the crock pot all day and not have to worry about it. I like to serve this taco soup with just some mini tortilla chips. Put a little cheddar cheese on it, some sour cream, and green onions. This was so flavorful and delicious. You know how I am about leftovers. I love them. We did not have a lot of leftovers out of these soups. We ate this one night. The next day, me and my daughter ate it for lunch, and it was gone. Same thing with the gnocchi. And now we're going to make a crock pot potato soup. It couldn't be any easier for this throw and go soup. Starting out by spraying my crock pot, of course, with a little nonstick spray. And then I have a big bag of frozen diced hash browns. Of course, they had all conglomerated into one big cube there. They'll come apart as you stir in things. And then I had frozen diced onions that I put in with that. Going back over the top of that with four cups of chicken broth. And I'm using my small crock pot here so you can really see how careful I'm being not to splash myself here. And that is just a little bit of the chicken broth base mix that I did not get stirred in good there. I'm going to throw a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And I decided I would make this what they call crack. Anything that you throw ranch dressing in is now called crack whatever. So I took what I had left in that ranch packet and just put it in here. Then I'm just going to mix all that together. Kind of chunk up those potatoes and begin to get them covered a little. Going to throw in a can of cream of chicken soup and mix it all thoroughly. Once you get it all combined, just put the lid on and I let this cook all day long again on low when I was gone. Once I got home from work, I removed the lid, stirred it up just a little bit. And then I have an 8-ounce block of cream cheese laying over there, and I'm just going to cut it up into cubes and put it down into the crock pot to dissolve. You have seen me make potato soup here before on top of the stove, just the old timey, you know, the kind that Mama would make you with milk, butter, and maybe some chicken broth and onion maybe throw some vegetables in it. This is more of the loaded baked potato soup. You could definitely go ahead and put crumbled bacon, cooked up crumbled bacon down in this and cook it in it. But for texture wise, I just like to add it at the end. You do whatever suits your taste. But I've got that cream cheese stirred in and I'm just gonna put the lid on it and let it set for maybe 30 minutes. Then I'm going to whip up this really easy Mexican cornbread. I love this little mix. You just add one egg. Then you're going to put in a third a cup of milk and one of these small cans of cream style corn. This is just about an eight ounce can of cream style corn. You're going to mix all that together and then stir in a cup of cheddar cheese. I'm going to bake this off in the oven and I will be sure to leave you a pin for this soup and the taco soup and this little cornbread mix because they have a different southwestern cornbread recipe on the bottom of that bag now on the back of it and this is what used to be on the bag years ago and I just like this because it's much more simpler 
to make and I just honestly like the flavor of this better. So I'll be sure and leave you pins for these soups and then I'll also leave you information for this cornbread too. You can see the cream cheese is beginning to melt in and the potatoes have gotten nice and soft. And cream cheese is hard to get melted down thoroughly. So I just take the back of my spoon and I'll take the big chunks and just kind of mush them up against the side to kind of dissolve that down a little bit more. And here's your look at this beautiful cornbread with that cream style corn in there. It's not super spicy. Y'all know if you've been around here that I'm not big on spices like hot. I love flavor, but I don't like my mouth to be burned. And this is just perfect. You can see the corn kernels in there and just a little bit of flavor from the different spices in it. Now we're gonna load it out with some shredded cheese and some of these bacon crumbles. Putting our green onions on there. This was so good. And I like to crumble a little bit of that Mexican cornbread down inside of mine. Could not ask for a better meal. Now I'm going to make Fallon's white chicken chili. And I pulled out my big crock pot for this one because this seemed like it was going to take up some room. The recipe said to use two of the large cans of white chicken, but I had this cooked chicken that I had shredded up and had in the freezer from earlier, so I just decided to use that. That looked about like the same amount. I'm putting in two cans of Great Northern Beans, the 15 ounce cans. The recipe calls for chili beans, but I had bought Great Northern Beans to make this recipe, so that's just what I used. I'm putting in one can of Kroger brand Rotel diced tomatoes with chili. Putting in a 15 ounce can of sweet corn. And again, I'm not draining or rinsing anything that goes in here. And I'm gonna throw in some salt and pepper. I'm gonna throw in about a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm gonna go in with a nice big spoonful of minced up garlic. And I've got two packages of McCormick's white chicken chili seasoning packs. Got two of those and I'm gonna use both of them. And I'm going to add in a can of cream of chicken soup. And then we're going to add some chicken broth. I had one can here that was about 15 or 16 ounces. And then I mixed up about two more cups worth. So I had nearly four cups of chicken broth that went in here. I'm going to stir that together, put the lid on it. I cooked mine on high for a couple hours and then I cut it down to low. You could use a rotisserie chicken in this. You could use canned chicken. You could even just put some frozen chicken breast or your raw fresh chicken breast down in there and let it cook on high and it would cook up fine. Now this is later at the end of the day. I'm coming back and stirred it up really good. Everything's done but I'm adding that block of cream cheese, which is gonna give this a wonderful creamy flavor. Just like with the potato soup, I'm stirring it in. I'm gonna put the lid back on it and let it melt down and get incorporated about 20 or 30 minutes. While that's going on, I'm just gonna make up some cheese quesadillas to eat on the side. 
And this is a recipe that I got from Fallon at Moss Family TV. I'm sure all of you guys know her. I'll be sure to link her video where they made the chili and her channel down below. And they made this chili when some friends were at their house and they made a big double batch of it and did it over the fire outside. And I had been wanting to try me a white chicken chili. I had never made it and I really wanted to try one. So when I saw Fallon and her friend make this, I thought this was the one to try. This was her friend's mom's recipe, if I'm not mistaken. But again, this one was delicious. Thank you so much, Fallon, for sharing this on your channel. It has become a new favorite of ours. Now, I did crunch up some tortilla chips under the bottom, put our chili over it, some sour cream and cheese and then I cut up that little quesadilla and served it down in there. This was amazing. Now I'm going to show you a crock pot meal that was given to me this week. It's these pinto beans. Once a month, the ladies at our church make a meal to deliver to the shut-ins and the sick in our neighborhood and our church, but they had a lot of people that were out this week. They feed the workers too. So they had a lot of leftovers. My mom offered to bring me some. Yes! They made greens, macaroni and cheese, cornbread, and pinto beans. I threw those fish sticks in the oven just to go with it. This was delicious, and what made it even the best, I didn't have to cook it. So there's my plate. You know, I put that big spoonful of mayonnaise on top of those pinto beans. That's the only way to do it around here. And this was a great meal. I hope that you have got some new ideas here tonight, or maybe just gotten reminded of something you hadn't had in a long time. All of these are my favorite things. They're delicious, they're hearty, quick, and easy. My family loved this week. I especially loved these easy crock pot meals. Don't forget to go and check out Small Town Six with Tiffany. I'll be sure to leave her what's for dinner down in my box. Tell her that Mel sent you. And again, if you're here from Tiffany's channel, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.